Today's video is all about defending guys. I'm going to explain what you need to do in defending and what you shouldn't do. But firstly, let me explain the play styles of the player you should get. See, Virgil van Dijk is good. At the moment, his goal card, I still use him. A lot of people are annoyed with him. Look here. The two most important play styles is Bruiser and Jockey. What Bruiser does, let me explain. You see, when you can't win the ball over and say maybe your opponent's here and maybe you here. You'll run over and what you'll do, you'll press the X button on PlayStation and he'll perform a shoulder tackle, your player. And then he launch his shoulder in between your opponent's chest and he'll in his body will go in between and he'll win the ball over. So that's the purpose of this playstyle, which is very important. You guys should have this playstyle if you have a center back. Try and get a center back with both these playstyles. Then the second one I'm gonna speak about jockeying. Jockeying is also a very important playstyle, so your player can jockey nicely and block the angles of your opponent then the other one we're going to talk about is block block is very important it's a simple play style all you all the play style does is basically block the angles and it's good at you know when your opponent want to take shots that's a block play style then we have anticipate you basically like go in and tackle your opponent roughly and win the ball over so remember what i said guys Try and get players with these two important play styles, especially for your center backs. Now, I want to explain the settings, then I'm going to get into explaining the gameplay and what I did in gameplay after the post-patch, how I defend. Let's get straight into it, guys. Okay, guys, here we are in the settings. Before I get into the gameplay and also illustrating the different jockey techniques, Firstly, let's do the settings and explain the advanced defending. You want it on the advanced defending. The reason why advanced defending you can perform a shoulder tackle, what I just spoke about. Tactical defending you cannot, so keep it on the advanced defending. Then, right stick switching. You want it on classical. All the pros use it. Majority, 99% of people use classical. Then. Here's your right stick switching reference point. You want it on player relative. That will be your reference point from where you need to switch. Right stick switching, I made a video of that. I'll put it in a link in, in the description. I'll put a link there. Then here, right stick switching sensitivity. You want to keep it on four. Four or either two. Experiment, I did try out four. At the moment, it's working well, not so bad, but I'm thinking of going back to two. I'll suggest between two and four and just play around with it and see which is best for you. Then here, next player switching, closest to ball, because this is a L1 switching. You want it closest to, cl closest to ball. It's very important. Anyways, guys. Okay, guys, here we are. I'm going to explain the four different jockey techniques when to use them and when not to use them. Okay, let's get straight into it. As you guys can see, my controller is displayed, so you guys can see what I'm pressing. Okay, look here. Firstly, we're gonna talk about the slow jockey technique. Huh? The slow jockey technique, you hold down. Uh, L2 on PlayStation, yeah, L2. Then on Xbox, it will be LT. And you just move with your left stick in motion. Remember, do not move your controller like us here. I, I mean, your uh, left stick. Like that, look how it's jockeying. You want to move it in circular motion, like I always say, look. Can you see? Guys, look. L -l 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 look how it's moving. So, remember circular motion. And, and trying to anticipate where is it going to go. Then the moment you see there's a chance, that's when you go in for a tackle and press circle on PlayStation, like look. Circle on PlayStation and B on Xbox. Okay, so that's a slow jockey. The slow jockey, where you're going to use it, mainly on 1v1 situations or in the box. Do not use a fast jockey in the box. And remember that. Okay, nextly, we're gonna speak about this 
a technique what I use. It's called the accelerate and break technique. You uh, run with R2 on PlayStation and then on Xbox it'll be LT run. Then you hit L2 on PlayStation slash LT on Xbox. And you just murder your opponent and you try and get a ball. See if your opponent's far from you, you run the L2. R2 I mean breaks, then L2 will be break. See R2, L2, break. Then press the circle button, you try and get him. So remember, run button, then L2 is a break button. As simple as that. This here, when your opponent is a distance from you, this is when you use this. I speak about this many times. This is the accelerate and break technique. Okay, then the second jockey technique. We know the third jockey technique. This here, the third jockey technique is a fast jockey. You hold on L2 and R2 on PlayStation and Xbox. It will be L, B, N, R, no, LT and RB. And you move around in motion. Now, where you want to use this, you want to use this basically outside the box. This is when you want to use this. Okay, let's explain the last jockey technique. It's, it's similar to the accelerate and brake technique. You know, you hold on both bumpers, L2 and R2 and then on Xbox it will be LB and RT okay look here you know hold it both down then all of a sudden when your opponent is near then you will let go of R2 the run button and look how I just stopped look mirroring you see it, but did you guys see early on just have a look here I'll try and see where my opponent's gonna go predict then all of a sudden try and stop let me try again Mara, 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 stop. But then you see, I never align it right. So, this other jockey technique, what I'm talking about here, you use it outside the box. You see, you use it outside the box. So, let's now straight get into the gameplay examples. Watch how I defend here, yeah, guys. So, you guys can also watch and learn, and it will help you after the post patch let's get straight into it okay guys here we are here's the examples let's get straight into it look here i want to explain defending starts the moment you don't have the ball not only inside the box that's when you need to start defending yeah look i selected this player here then i selected that player there why am i doing that i'm basically trying to form a wall see i'm going there because i'm Covering options as you can see. I recover the pass to this player. Yeah, I don't want my opponent to pass to that player there. So there I formed a wall there. You guys see. And that's what what switching. If I if you ever look at my controller, right stick switching, as you guys can see. Covering that player now, switch there. See, I'm covering Van Dyke, as you guys can see. So Look, you guys, switching needs to be like at a certain level. So switching is very important. Now, look, I switched to George Best. I was covering this area here. As you guys can see, remember this. Always cover the empty space, especially if there's if your opponent's players are there. I on the radar. Let me just check if there's anyone there. Okay. I see the ball holders here. Is anyone there? No, there's no one there. But I just make it a habit to you not. Why I'm covering here? So it doesn't exploit the space. You see, that's also another reason why. Also, another thing you see, positioning, guys. I'm not making my players run out of position. Yeah, as you can see, I'm tracking back. You see, covering runs also is very important i mentioned just now i'm switching with my center back why am i doing that there because who's the main threat this player here you see so it's important to make sure to see who's the main threat in the game remember in my previous videos i explained i said do not run out after the ball do not make the ball priority now i'm running back i'm tracking that player now another thing also i'll teach you guys is movement movement yeah movement and positioning you see i never 
run with Van Dyke out of position. I'll teach you guys a simple technique to remember these things. So it's movement, uh, it's positioning. What's very important here, you guys see how, how am I positioned? Positioning, movement, and awareness. And another thing, overcommitting. I'm trying not to overcommit here, if you guys can see. Look, I'm going that side. See, I'm blocking the angles I'm using. The slow jockey, as you guys can see, they passed to Mbappe. Now look, I managed to stop Mbappe, as you guys can see. Look, Mbappe never get through. Look, he took a shot. I blocked it because why Virgil van Dijk was there. So you guys, look, I don't overcommit. And my awareness level is at a high level. So there, I won the ball over here. As you can see, I'm again tracking back the runner and trying to use second man press at the same time. As you guys can see, second man press is very important to use because what you're basically doing there, I anticipated where he was going to pass and I won the ball over. See, and it all started with also positioning. In Van, if Van Dyke wasn't there and I was running with players out of position, I wouldn't have been able to intercept that pass. So remember, positioning is very important. A good structure is very important there. I'm tracking back, now I'm switching with George Best. Why am I constantly switching players? Because I want to like form a wall. You know what I'm saying? There I'm second man pressing. There they pull Kafu out of position a bit. But it's okay. Anyways, the main thing is if you pull a player out of position, you have to recover. There have to be another player, like if I pull this player out of position here, yeah, there have to be another player of mine behind to cover this empty space. If you understand what I'm saying. Okay, so let's move on. As you guys can see, look how I'm switching one way. Now, I'm going there. I'm trying to anticipate what he's going to do. I see he player lock. I'm going back. So now he deactivated the player lock. Player lock fake. Second man pressing at the same time. See, I'm not worried about a ball. I'm not chasing it. Now he passed to Mbappe. Switching to Roberto Carlos. I quickly see awareness comes in here. I saw Mbappe has the ball. Then I switched to Van Dijk. I'm running that side. As you can see, he got a shot. But see, I was a little bit too late. But at least my awareness was there. See, he got a shot and my, luckily my keeper was there. Now again, see, defending starts the moment we lose the ball. See, running. I just switch there. See, I the second man press for a while. See, second man pressing for a while. As you can see with second man press, I'll make a dedicated video. You see, I selected this player here. This player is on inside. Now I'm second man pressing with this player here. That's what second man press does. When you select the player from the inside, the player from the outside will second man press. If I have to select like maybe this player here, and then George Best will second man press, you see. And that sometimes is a huge mistake. We don't want to make that mistake. That's why I'll soon make a dedicated video on second man press. As you guys can see, look, trying to be passive and aggressive there. I anticipated that pass. You see where he's where in the pass. See, another secret I want to teach you guys. Uh, see, like, yeah, I'm running back. Because why I'm running back, I, I'm thinking my opponent's going to make a pass. You see, when he makes a pass, you need to, like, be passive. Hear me out loud, guys. Thus, I heard it from my pro coach. You need to be passive if your opponent's making a pass. If you see your opponent's not making a pass, then you need to be aggressive and step in. If your opponent's not so far, you need to be aggressive and step in to get a ball. See, switching back and forth, running with George Bessie, I'm covering the space. As you can see, my opponent panicked there, the ball went out. Yeah, in this instance, as you can see, I switched a while, second man pressed for a while. I switched to George Best, now second man pressing again for a while. Here, here you guys see how second man press work. But this is also for another video. Look. I switch now George Best. See, George Best is in control. And here, as you guys can see, look. I selected a player from the outside and a player from the inside is second man pressing. We don't want to make this mistake when it comes to our center backs because we do not want to pull our center backs out of position. 
as you guys can see they're running back i'm covering the space which is very important because i don't want my opponent to have space when we're defending it's totally different from attacking we don't want to give our opponent space to exploit they're tracking back as you guys can see and sw switching in between the two players you can see trying to cover passing lanes i'm trying to anticipate where is he gonna go they have selected kafu i'm trying not to overcommit with kafu you see positioning is very important i'm keeping in, po in position here as you can see the ai did a job for me and i got a ball but we don't want to rely on ai defending yeah, as you can see i'm trying to make life tough for him i'm switching like they, as you guys can so see i switch with my center back just want to show you look because i see a runner yeah i see this guy so remember covering runs is very important i see this player yeah and that's when i switch there just to make him to say i'm aware i know what you want to do yeah i'm switching back and forth as you guys can see i'm switching to my center back there who, who's the main danger why i switch to this player here? because i'm seeing who's the main threat let's just go back look here i switch with carlos prio because why i saw janola as the main threat as you guys can see, I'm trying to keep them in positioning. Positioning is very important. Watching his movement. Yeah, I got a ball. Also, another trick on it, uh, I like to teach you guys. Let's just go back. Look there, Janola has a ball. I think so, he does a, a normal elastico. No, he doesn't. See, they switch there. Yeah, I was a little bit lucky. See, Virgil van Dijk's out of position. As you guys can see, look. Positioning is very important. Look where is my Virgil van Dijk. So remember, positioning your center backs. Try to keep them where they belong. Yeah, Mbappe has the ball now. Mbappe, as you guys can see, look. I'm going there, now I'm second man pressing, as you guys can see, I selected my center back, killing two birds with one stone, now quickly, see, the moment I let go, if, if I see there's a chance and he has no ball contact, that's when I let go, second man press and I switch to this play and there I won the ball, over, as you guys can see, yeah look, I'm going to show you guys, do not make stupid mistakes like this, as you guys can see, look where's, where was the ball, and I switch over here. You guys need to make sure, look at the radar and make sure your player is available, then switch. Look, I lost the ball in the wrong area and look, now he's coming for me. Now I need to defend. As you guys can see, running back with George Bass, selecting my center back there, second man pressing, trying to kill two birds with one stone. There, selected George Bass, second man pressing with my right back i'm putting him under pressure i want him to suffer i'm suffocating him i don't want life to be easy for him then quickly when i'm near him i switch to that player there i l1 switch then i'm giving him hard time see if you push your player back like i always explain if you push your opponent back and he doesn't know where to go from there that's a win for you because you're making life tough for him there yeah, i managed i got a ball over but then there look i lost the ball that's why you guys see the moment you win the ball over your half like look yeah this is a stupid mistake from me look yeah what i should have done in this instance look where my left stick is pointed it's pointed in this direction yeah and who's there the opponent is there i should have pointed my left stick down in this direction as you guys can see, don't make silly stupid mistakes like us and lose the ball in the wrong area like how I did. But I am trying to fight for the ball, trying to win it over. It's a free kick. As you guys can see here, when your opponent takes free kicks, try to make sure you go back with your player too. Basically, cover area and help the goalkeeper. That's very important. Also, another thing in kickoff, guys, I want to explain and tell you guys use striker drop back. Use striker drop back. What this will do, 
all you do is just uh, you press the uh, top button on your controller on the left hand side and that then it will give you the option striker drop back what striker drop back will do your striker will drop back and you'll have a better defense in kickoff please use this guys make sure striker drop back and offside traps look offside traps i'm pressing it what offside traps does your team will push up like look at the radar there let me just move this over look how my team is pushing up look at the radar you guys go back let me just Go back, watch, watch the radar. Look how my team is pushing up. So you guys want to make sure you use strikes, a, a striker drop back and offside traps in during kickoff. See there, I'm making sure I don't run like here and overcome it. As you guys can see, look, I'm trying to track him. Where is he going? See, I'm using a little bit of a slow jockey and second man press. Then there. I never yet get a ball, but I'm not over committing and chasing it. Yeah, I'm switching back and forth. As you guys can see, why I'm switching back and forth was to cover empty space. I do not want to give my opponent any space. As you guys can see, look here. There's how many players I have? One, two. Who can he pass to? He hardly has passing options. That's how you guys see you want to suffocate your opponent. They look now, switch to the better color so run the other side to cover and Pape's passing to, to cover and Pape. Second man press, then I let go. Second man press when I see I'm near my opponent and my opponent doesn't have any ball contact. I step in and I get the ball. They look, I managed to win the ball over. And as you guys can see, look, I'm leading here two goals. And look how, how I'm defending. They yeah, switch to the better colors, got a ball, switch it over here. Applying pressure going forward now. Switching as you guys can see. Why I'm running like this here? Because I'm covering basically this area here also. Besides covering the passing lane. I don't want Ramos to exploit this area of space as you guys can see. So look, that's very important guys. Okay, let's move on. Yeah, I'm switching. See, I'm thinking ahead. I'm covering that player there. I don't want him to pass to him. I'm making life hard. The second man pressing. Now, switching to my center, to my right back. You see, now I just, I just, I just second, no, I just switched to my right back. Then I switched to my center back. Second man pressing on my right back. Switching to my right back when I see there's a chance. And from there, switching to my center back. See, this game consists of a lot of switching. Yeah, as you guys can see, I must time the tackle. Look, I believe I was supposed to get this ball. I believe this was the game's fault. But anyway, I don't complain. Let's see. Look. My positioning is right, as you guys can see. I was supposed to win the ball over there, but I didn't. He took a shot. Now, I'm still defending here. But wait, it was offside, trapped there. I, I mean, yeah, it was offside. Look here, stupid mistakes. Make sure, guys, you calculate your surroundings and then you make a pass. Look, I ended up losing the ball. Now I have to defend again. I repass it to Van Dyke. What if I had to lose it in my half? There he has the ball with Chanola. As you guys can see, look, I was going back. I think I won the ball there. But anyway, here's another example. Look, I'm going back. Now I see the pass to his left back or his left winger going there. I selected that player. Now I selected the other player. Switching back and forth, covering the center. Second man pressing. There, now he, he switched over there. See there, why am I running here? Wait, I was supposed to actually run in this area there. Look, he crossed the ball. Virgil van Dijk was a little bit out of position. Yeah, luckily my keeper was there. Look, silly stupid passes again I made. So make sure guys when you're defending, do not make these silly stupid passes like how I did. Calculate your surroundings and look at the radar and see who's available.
Then now my center back, I switch to him. As you guys can see, look at the pass back because you see. Look, there's no option. I'm covering this player here. And I was covering that player there. He, re he recycled from there. I'm trying to anticipate where is he going to go. As you guys can see, look, I'm trying to be a little passive because I see he wants to make a pass, which he did. Now quickly, I need to switch. As you guys can see, look. Here, I was kind of lucky. That's how you guys see it's important. Here, the mistake I made. Okay, made a pass. Here, I should have quickly switched to. That's why it's important to anticipate these things. I will quickly right to switch to Van Dyke and cover maybe just like stay here, go a little back and wait for Mbappe to come, then block the angle. There, look at the pass to that player there. I should have quickly switched to Van Dyke. As you guys can see, look, I'm doing something stupid here. That's why it's important to anticipate these things. Yeah, I should have switched to Virgil Van Dyke and cover on Papa. Instead, I didn't. If this was a good, good player, you would have scored there. But he never. Anyways, look there what stupid, silly mistakes I make. Guys, as you guys can see, do not make this a habit. You, it's okay to make these mistakes, but do not make it a habit. Yeah, look at Roberto Carlos. What am I doing? I, I fake shot, stop here. I should have look here at the radar. My players are basically free. I should have crossed it over to radar. Switch it all the way here to this player. Yeah, but instead I didn't. I did a stupid, silly fake shot stop. And look, I ended up losing the ball in the wrong area. So you don't want to make these silly mistakes here. Yeah, Here's another secret I want to teach you guys. Look here. With the skill moves, I'll make a video separate on this here. Well, what I want to say, with exiting direction, you guys, you sh should know. Like, look there. I selected this guy. Look here. I think so. He did a, what you call is normal el elastico. Because if you look where he's going, he's going clockwise. Look, he did a normal elastico. Look, the exit direction is that side. I managed to get a ball. I'll make a video separate on that very soon. Look, defending, switching back and forth. Tracking the runners, trying not to overcommit. Yeah, I saw he pass to that player. Now, what am I doing here? Why am I going and leaving him a little bit space? Because if I don't, he's gonna quickly make a pass to him. And who is there to cover this passing lane? The space. Because by the time this guy gets there, he won't be able to stop this individual here from scoring if you guys see so that's why the player closest to the space to uh, what my opponent can exploit i go back with him but in there i apply a little bit pressure as you guys can see look i'm giving him a little bit of a hard time and there i selected van dyke quickly there i selected kafu he's a little unsure of what he want to do because you see i'm giving him a hard time From the second man pressing, I selected that player there quickly. As you guys can see, I'm not over committing because I always explain the main goal of defending is to block the angles and do not worry about the ball. Yeah, I'm pushing him. I'm, I'm pushing him back. Selected Carlos. Now I selected my center back. As you guys can see, second man pressing. Now quickly, look, I managed to get a ball over. Yeah, I made another silly stupid mistake. I lost the ball in the wrong area. Do not do stupid mistakes like us guys. As you guys can see, look how much of times I make these silly mistakes. Look there with George Best. I should have go take a touch all the way here. All the way in this area or else quickly laid off to Kafu. Yeah, I, start, I try silly stupid things and look what happens. Look. I should have, when I had a ball like here, let, let's just go over that again. Why I'm going over these things? Because I don't want you guys to make the silly, stupid mistakes. Look here. Never try and take off, take on your opponent. Always go into the empty space. You see, even when you're attacking. Because when you're attacking and you lose a ball in the wrong area, it will cost you. Like, look here, I should have passed back to him. I should have passed back to him or should have laid off to this player quickly. Also, I should have taken a touch backwards into the empty space. Instead, I 
want to take him on like a big shot and look what uh, what ended up happening lose the ball in a wrong area there he's doing player lock but i'm applying pressure on him and there i managed to win the ball over yeah he's coming for me again there as you guys can see i don't know what he did i think so he took a heavy touch or he tried pass let me let's just see see he did take a heavy touch and look what happened so remember also these heavy touches do not take it when you guys are playing the game always make sure when you receive the ball it's for another video this but i'm just reminding you guys when you receive the ball in your area or anywhere in the area take a touch into the empty space and let go of the run button because look what that guy he lost the ball there look now he's he, he's trying he's basically frustrated as you guys can see look how he's attacking I managed to get a ball over there because you see how well I was defending so that's how I managed to win this game guys look sw uh, switching in between you see I second man press for a while if I see I'm near a ball holder I let go of second man press I like L1 switch and I try and win the ball over you guys see so you guys remember second man press use it like that there if you second man press for a while and you see you near the ball holder and you can win the ball over l1 switch and then get that ball also right stick switching and l1 switching use it to get it it goes well in combination see your stupid mistakes here i'm not anticipating in time what he's doing is it here no 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 it's not sorry about that guys Hey, look, he take a heavy touch, I win the ball over. I think so. It's okay there. I also won the ball over. Where is it? Okay, it's not there. As you guys can see, look how well I'm defending there. Block. Okay, guys. We went over the main things in defending. This is quite a long video. But what I want to say. All these four things you guys need to remember. Just... Think of abbreviation like the first thing is positioning positioning is very important let me just rewind here see you guys need to think of you guys need to remember your positioning is very important your center backs now and then you can pull them out of position if there's another player to cover for that defender of yours so positioning is very important movement also is very important make sure you're not too aggressive and that's what your movement and overcome it you know what i'm saying then three awareness game awareness when you're defending you need to watch every little thing what your opponent's doing you know the direction your opponent goes you need to move in that direction and switch there so that's game awareness when you're defending when another thing for is stop over committing like you guys saw if you overcommit and you bring a, you gonna bring a player out of position, then you gonna let him exploit that space. So overcommitting, do not do that, there, guys. So how you remember these four techniques in defending? What I'm telling you guys, just think of P M A S: positioning, movement, awareness, stop overcommitting. The last thing what I told you guys, remember when you need to be passive. Be passive if you see your opponents trying to make a pass. If you see your opponents not trying to make a pass and you can get to him, you guys need to judge and see the distance. If you can run over and get the ball, run over, get the ball and press the tackle button. So yeah guys, it's uh, that simple guys, it's that simple. This is a long video but I hope you guys enjoy this video and I hope you guys took something from it and learned from this video. Anyways guys, if you guys now want to learn two hidden techniques on how to improve your attack while the pros are using i suggest you click on this video here which will highly help you anyways guys i will catch you guys in the next video peace out guys